Yo, what is up YouTube? My name is Aaron and today we're going to be talking about something that's very controversial. I'm going to say something and the title has probably already sparked interest and you're probably already typing so fast on the keyboard you can't even hear me talk. But I'm going to go ahead and say this. I do not belong to the console world. I don't think a single console is better than another console. The console you should pick is the one your friends are playing on because that's all that matters to you. It doesn't matter if the PlayStation is 4K and 3D and has all these cool features, but if your friends are on the Xbox One, you're going to have more fun on the Xbox One. So let's get into this video, and as you can already tell by the title, I do think the Xbox One is going to be the best console ever made. Now, you can't look at something like this in present tense. You can't say right now the Xbox One's better or right now the PlayStation's better because really they're the same. And the only thing that changes is software and what that company does with the hardware and software. So let's look at Xbox from the beginning and then we'll finish this video off with what they're doing now. So whenever it came out, you had to have the Kinect plugged in, you had to be connected to Xbox Live, or at least rumors, and that deeply impacted the sales of Xbox One. That's really where PlayStation started pulling ahead, is whenever they announced that. No one liked it, I didn't like it, I didn't even want an Xbox One because of that. I didn't like the fact that I had to keep a Kinect plug in, plugged in, and I could not play in offline mode, because very rarely I do like playing in offline mode, but I didn't want it at the time. So they listened to the people, we didn't want it, they fixed it. Alright, and these are just the top three things that I've picked. Next up, we have something that's changed Xbox One already a lot. They added an emulator in for an Xbox 360 to be able to play 360 games on the Xbox One using the Xbox One controller and just basically loading up a 360 on your Xbox One. It's an emulator and they did a really good job with this. People wanted it, they brought it. Now people can play their older 360 games without having a second console. People, A lot of people sell their 360 to buy an Xbox One but maybe they keep some of the games, maybe they keep their favorite games in hopes that next-gen backwards compatibility support comes out and that's whenever you look at PlayStation and you see they haven't done that much. It's pretty much been the same since whenever you bought it. I know there's small little tweaks that's made it better, but generally it's the same thing. Xbox, on the other hand, like I said, has went through many stages making it one of the better consoles. And something that just came out more recently is really going to top the charts. So if you haven't already heard, yes, the Xbox One and the Xbox, the Microsoft crew, are working on a way for you to be able to play against people on PlayStation and PC. So you could go into a Call of Duty match and instead of there being like 300, 600,000 people online, there'd be like 1.2 million, 1.3 million people online. Everyone that owns Black Ops 3 will be able to play Black Ops 3 together. I like that. I like that Xbox did something that people have been begging for for years. And, you know, there's a double there's double edge to this. Some may say Xbox One cells are hurting, so Microsoft had to do something to pique people's interest, but I think they did it because it screams to me that they care about their fans, that they care about people that own an Xbox One and they want to make that experience great and wants to stop them from continuing to do so. Just adding in new features, uh, virtualization, that could be one. Adding in a way that you could play PC games, that could be one. And I mean, speaking of PC and Xbox, if you have Windows 10, which it's a free upgrade and I do recommend you get Windows 10, you can actually stream and play your Xbox One games on your computer. So let's say your Xbox One is hooked up into the living room you could take your laptop into your bedroom or you could go to your bedroom computer as long as it has Windows 10 and be able to play your Xbox One on that. And you could do much more than that, but that's just one of the things that you could do. You can start parties on your computer, you could be at school or something, and let's say all your friends, well, I mean, at school is not, not too great of an example, but in a place that you're not around your Xbox and still be able to communicate with your Xbox friends by joining Xbox Live parties, sending them messages, they're really doing something that 
in a few years, people are going to look back on and be like, wow, the Xbox One is where it's at. But the way that cells are and the way people try to get the bleeding edge. I mean, how many of you guys had a PlayStation or an Xbox in the first year or two that it was out? A lot. A lot of people did, and then a lot of people have it now, whenever Black Ops 3, like three years later. So, it's all about just what's new, and you can't call a console bad or good. There is no such thing as a bad console, especially in 2016. I have not seen a bad console, and if you guys just understood half of the work that went into it, you would never see it yourself. I mean, it's amazing, and like I said, I am not a part of the console war. The console that I tell people to get is the one that your friends are on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Aaron, and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new commentary.